Oh, to be sure. clear, clear to, because okay. my uh, cult uh, loyalty was way down. Okay. Marriage was a strong one to bring it back up. <laughs> See, I didn't choose the I didn't choose the marriage. So one. I married a oh eight, nine. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Bush League Gaming Podcast, your source for ordinary opinions from ordinary gamers. Today we are reviewing Cult of the Lamb. I'm your host, Jacob Bush, and with me today. He still answers the phone by saying, "Was up? Your favorite Crip Boy, <laughs> Mike Beard. I could have sworn that would have been an Adam one. I actually thought that was yeah. going to be. Yeah, I considered it, but I don't know. It, it fit you a little bit. Yeah. I stopped doing that last year. Yeah, last year? Okay. Mm-hmm. My my notes are out of date. Here. I say bring it back, dude. Yeah. Don't, don't let it die. Yeah. Do you remember when that was kind of just like around school? Because like, we were like in elementary, oh, yeah. I think, when that first came out. Was it elementary? It feels like it. Maybe not. It's that's really funny. The uh, uh, we had a the conference in April, mm-hmm. um, and one of the keynote speakers on there had like this whole dialogue around was uh, Are you and serious? like making fun of uh, <laughs> like the audience he was trying to make fun of, and so that's, that's funny you say that. It's yeah, actually huh. twice I've heard that now gotcha. this year. Got gotcha, you good. He exclusively takes pictures of himself with a selfie stick. He is your, the world's greatest bat boy, Adam Mossbrucker. Yeah. It's a useful tool for your day-to-day life. Yeah. Yeah. Adam's just in Dutch Bros, just like reaching over the counter (laughs) everywhere he goes. Or just like, I'm getting my morning, my morning brew. (laughs) Dutch Bros. (laughs) Anyways, let's get into this review. Uh, Uh, Today, we are reviewing Cult of the Lamb. Released on PC, Mac OS, PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox platforms on August 11th, 2022. Developed by Massive Monsters. Published by Devolver Digital currently priced at $25 genre is roguelite with town management, which is a interesting mm-hmm. mix that we'll get mm-hmm. into a brief description of this game. Cult of the lamb cast players in the role of a possessed lamb saved from annihilation by an ominous stranger and must repay their debt by building a loyal following in his name. Start your own cult in a land of false prophets, venturing out into diverse and mysterious regions to build a loyal community of woodland woodland followers and spread your word to become the one true cult. Wow. So I actually heard a description read. Does it sound worse when you, yeah. does it, you, you <laughs> say it bad. like it's a problem. Uh, no, but yeah, it sounds maybe a little more intense. <laughs> the first sentence is a possessed lamb. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> like, what? So, uh, just to clarify here before we kind of get into our opinions, I just want to state that this is very much two. There's two halves to this game. There is the city management half, and then there's the roguelike half. City management is similar to like an Animal Crossing or uh, maybe a Stardew Valley or a Harvest Moon where you're like, you know, taking care of crops and your villagers and yeah. taking care of their needs and building things. And then there's the roguelite aspect, which is, you know, in a dungeon uh, close to like, you know, at least classic Diablo gameplay in some ways where you're making your way through rooms or, you know, closer maybe to Hades. Hades, Hades is yeah, much yeah. closer. Yeah. Um, and you're basically getting randomized floors and you're trying to clear them and get to a boss. So very different halves of the game, but I just wanted to clarify that for the, the listener up front. The other thing too, I wanted to clarify art style is not what you expect based on the description. It is cutesy. It is pop-up book. Like it's kind of like paper Mario and you know, for the themes and kind of for the, that, that description there, it's, it's not a really consistent with the, the plot of the story. So all that said, I want to hop right into it. Uh, I want to start with Adam because Adam's been on the verge of just bringing this game up for the last couple of weeks when we've been playing this. What were your overall thoughts of Cult of the Lamb? Well, overall, this game is good and, I, and I'm going to recommend it. But man, I, I kind of ebbed and flowed throughout the course of my play. There was times when I thought, wow, this game's amazing. And the other times I hated what was happening. Oh. Uh, so I kind of went up and down throughout the course, which we can talk about, but at the end it, it was a good game. I mean, I'm going to recommend it overall recommendation, but you have some, some issues. I have some issues. Yeah. Okay. Nick. It was good. Um, I thought the, the artwork was cute. Uh, it's kind of like, I don't know if Satan got inside animal crossing. It was a little different, different type of artwork, but it was good. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the length of it, which, uh, you know, we'll, we'll touch on later, I guess, mm-hmm. but it's, sh- it's not long. It wasn't a long game, so it was kind of a quick, quick joy. The, the one thing I would say is I started on Xbox, yeah. and actually, 
uh, ended up finishing it on Switch. Mm. Uh, thanks, Nintendo, for <clears throat> not giving me my refund. Um, <laughs> Uh, and it was really good. So I played it on two platforms, and aside from some minor bugs, it was really good. And make sure I come back to bugs, because I think yeah. we've all yeah. communicated some of that. So um, let's just start with story here. I would say this is a fairly story-like game. Uh, other than mm. what I just described uh, at the top, there's not much. Um, and I, I kind of wanted to throw it out to you, because this is how I played it. I kind of created my own story in some ways with my villagers and what I was doing with those villagers. Did you do any of that, or was it just a, a plain old gameplay focused game? Um, did you have any internal stories you were telling yourself? Because I, just to clarify, the story like starts. There's a little bit in the middle, and then there's some a little bit at the end. But there's really not much to the story. I think, right? I think that was one of the things that I was let down by a little bit. Yeah. Not that I needed some robust, deep story that's going to really challenge me and all that. But I felt like they set me up for a big story mm. and then didn't really deliver on that. So it was when the game first came, I thought, oh, this is going to be dynamic and there's going to be some very interesting plot points that happen. And it never really played out like that. So I think it was the game set my expectation that way. Uh, I I want to say, I remember you, tell, remember you telling me this. You're like, man, I'm really interested to see where this goes. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, and I didn't say this at the time because I wanted to save a bit of this for right now. I remember thinking like, I don't think so. Like, I do think um, maybe some of it communicated up front there, there might be something, but I also think this style of game, the approach, I, I looked at the trailers and I was like, oh, this is a gameplay game. And we talked about this before where there's some games that are gameplay, some are story driven, some are a really good mix. And I, I immediately thought this might've been a gameplay one. Hades, I think is a rare exception where mm. you could compare these two in a lot of similar ways. And Hades delivers on that story front oh, quite a bit better. Yeah. And that's uh, the only thing I had to compare yeah. to this. Yeah. The only other roguelike, roguelite. So there's roguelite and roguelike. Like, I I don't actually know which one this is. I think the description says this is a roguelike. Go ahead and say them interchangeably. I, I won't hold it okay. against you. I could barely yeah. tell, you the, tell you the difference. Yeah. So that's the only thing I had to compare to, which I think Hades had a great story. So, yeah. and I don't. I don't know if you felt this, but when the game starts, I mean, it's kind of a, it kind of hits you, especially for us guys growing up in the church. I mean, there's some pretty intense things that happen. Yeah. And while the game is cutesy and fun, they do not stray away from being deadly serious about yeah. the things you do. There is no yeah. humor that's actually one thing that I found. I, it, it looks cutesy, but nothing about the game is cutesy. It's yeah. all dead serious. This is a cult, and you're doing things a cult would do, and they don't have any irony in it. It's yeah, just, yeah. this is what you're doing. Yeah. So that was like kind of an initial shock for me at first, and so that's where I thought they were going to do some sort of twist and bring a moral <laughs> conclusion. Just a cult. Yeah. No. <laughs> I was actually – I wanted to ask this question. I'm, bring, I'm glad you bring this up. Was – you know, growing up with our backgrounds, was this a little unsettling as you played sometimes? Some of the the acts or imagery. Yeah, I, one one thing that I would say was unsettling was the, uh, and again, I I have no idea like where this comes from if it's true, but the names of some of like the bosses, they all seemed like very like demonic names. Like I think those were actual. Like one I saw was Beelzebub, mm -hmm. which I don't really know where that. Classic. Classic. I, I I know like, so every time I got to a boss and I saw this name, I'm like, man, are these just like real demon names? And so some of that was like a little unsettling. Um, not so much some of the other stuff, like the fact that you'd go into the cult. And this is one thing that I thought was kind of funny. Maybe we'll talk more about later, but it was like, you could kind of have this own narrative or story with your cult, depending on what you chose. But it was like, here's a really bad option. And then here's just like a less bad option. <laughs> and there was never like, you could be a, a bad cult leader or like a good cult leader. It was like, you can be really bad or like, you can just be like half bad. Can you think mm -hmm. of any of those examples just so we could give the, the audience uh, a, pull an, an idea? Yeah. I'm trying to think one was like, um, it was just weird. It was like, you could either like extort the money from them or like, do something that was the exact same, but just like less bad. Like bribe them. Bribe them yeah, or like something. It was like you cannot, like, so what Nick is describing is a, a, like a doctrine system 
So as you kind of like collect this, it's like a leveling up system, your character, you select different doctrines and you get two options. And as you progress, you know, I think there's a branch of five and there's like maybe four or five in those ca each category. So yeah. you're selecting. So like Nick's doctrine is different than mine and Adam's as we play this game. So for example, one is like, okay, you can either have the ability now to bribe your followers for more faith or you can ex you can pull money from them and like yeah. kind of steal money from them which are very like cult actions if you yeah, think yeah. Of like modern cults it's like oh yeah they completely take everyone's money and this and that and like one example is also you can resurrect your followers and the other option was something mm -hmm. uh, you, you like eat up or something mm -hmm. cannibalism is a completely different one yeah, yeah, yeah that is another option so it's like yeah do your followers uh are they okay eating you know, other followers meet yeah. or are they not turned off by when followers die? You know, there's like yeah. these weird options and there is right. I mean, Adam's right. <clears throat> there's no like cheeky other side to it. It's just like, nope, this is the game. Like this yeah. is it's 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 cult mechanics. And I think I get described at the top when you describe this game on paper and you don't see it, it's like, oh, this is dark, right? This is, yeah. this has to be very dark. Not at all what it looks like. Yeah. So I was very curious, given our backgrounds of uh were you ever kind of unsettled playing this and i would say i mean i would say there's some imagery even like uh what's the star with the circle i mean that's mm, all the throughout the pen game pen pentagram mm, pentagram yeah. like that one's just like classic demon and i'm just like oh i was like okay i guess this yeah. is everywhere um yeah and then also like your character goes from smiling and cute and happy and then it like does an actual cult like thing and the eyes just turn red and they're kind of like bleeding mm -hmm. like well and then there's the rituals which is a part of the the doctrine system like you know you can perform these rituals uh like that will either like kind of I, they're meant to like inspire your cult and bring everyone together and you to get more of this uh whatever the the energy is called that you get and it's like really cute. You all join around the circle, and but like you're gonna sacrifice someone, and then all of a sudden tentacles come out of like the ground and grab this thing and squish it, and it just blows up, and like the guts fall everywhere, and it's like, oh wow, like we just went from literally Animal Crossing to Satan just walked in on the screen and just like uh, murdered. Ten yeah, someone. tentacle yeah, Satan. Yeah, tentacle Satan. I was, was like, whoa. They they walk this line where it's like it was always just almost like unsettling for me to not want to but then i was just like oh no i guess it's fine mm -hmm. you know yeah. it never actually fully right. went there where i was yeah. bothered but it was just like playing with it it was just you know challenging me a little bit to be like is, how unsettled are you right now yeah so i would say generally for kids not a kid's game um but i would say that like you know user discretion it's like it's very occult focused yeah. mm -hmm. i did have some cheeky experiences i don't know if you guys did but uh i kept having this one cult member that kept coming up to me and saying hey we should totally feed uh yeah so and so a bowl of poop yeah and it's like yeah that's true okay that's weird so there were a couple of, like weird ones like that like that were kind of funny but for the most part yeah i mean it, it feels pretty uh you're running a cult and you need to manage it mm -hmm. well or you're not gonna have a good cult so mm -hmm. good i was just saying then you know you got the mechanics of one of the rituals is marriage ceremony. And when you when you discover that one, however it comes about, it says, and look, marry as many people as you want. It's yeah. your cult, you know? So yeah. stuff like that kind of made me laugh. I can't tell if they were being serious or not, but there, I guess there were a few moments where yeah. I was taken out of it a little bit. But yeah, they're pretty dead serious about it. Fight running. to the death. Uh -huh. another ritual. Well, I, I don't never, know if you guys get that, that one. one. No, I didn't uh, choose that one. I chose something else. Yeah. How many how many followers did you marry, Adam? Um always out of necessity oh, to be sure, clear sure. Yeah, to, okay. because my uh cult uh, loyalty was way down okay <laughs> marriage was a strong one to bring it back up <laughs> see i didn't choose the i didn't choose the marriage so one. i married a uh, oh eight nine <laughs> you're, you're cult a, members yeah very polygamous <laughs> polygamous here. yeah i don't know that's like that's just a part of uh cult right so, yeah. so some of the story that i was telling about i was trying i was getting at earlier is that some of the story i told myself within the game was kind of centered around those who i was marrying and then also so like i was very intentional about having the resurrection uh perk mm. because you as you become closer to your followers and they become more loyal they actually level up and become more loyal and then also there's a mechanic later in the game where you can actually turn them into monsters that will come into battle with you so they're cute at the village and the houses, and then you can convert them right before going into the dungeons and they'll be, you know, they'll shoot for you or swords or give you health. Yep. The higher level they are, the better they are in those environments. So I would 
marry a follower that was very loyal. And then as they would just age up and die, I would resurrect them and bring them back. Well, they keep their level. And I would do that like three nice. or four times mm, with some of that. them and get some of these characters to level like, you know, 14, 15, huh. and then bring them into battle with me. That's a mechanic I didn't tap into Same at all. Here. Yeah. But again, nice. you might have selected one other thing that maybe wasn't resurrection or wasn't like that, like converting or whatever it was, and you wouldn't even have that option. So like, there's actually a lot of flexibility to the, the gameplay mechanics here, mm -hmm. which I really appreciated. But yeah, those are like the kind of little stories of just like, yeah, this is someone that I know these three characters very well because they've come into battle with me every time. Mm -hmm. They're very loyal and I keep resurrecting them. And they do give you a bunch of freedom with your followers. So for the audience you gain followers by finding them out in your dungeon runs they're trapped and you got to save them you can buy them at the end did you guys mm -hmm. buy any followers from oh, the yeah. spider from the spider yeah, you can rescue them basically the spider's like i'm gonna eat them unless you buy them so like yeah. you can buy them yeah i bought yeah. a few at the end bought a few and then a few come through missions um, maybe maybe one thing to talk about too is there's the the camp management then there's the actual dungeons um but then there's this third part where you can go to different territories mm. that are unrelated mm -hmm. and uh i thought that was kind of a cool mechanic yes um i don't know if you guys unlock you you had to have locked, unlocked all of them right yeah to go through mm -hmm. the end yeah. yeah so um i didn't go to all of them but yeah but really you just completely skipped out on at the end i was just trying to complete the game Rush. so i was not going to some of those sure. other locations but yeah did the fishing did the fishing obviously played the knuckle bones knuckle bones yeah there's a mini game in it called knuckle bones which actually it's you know Compared to like Gwent, you know how in the game you can like yeah. go off into the side. So mm -hmm. it's actually a pretty good game. In my I thought opinion. it was fun. It was yeah, fun. It's a nice yeah. game. Yeah. I spent quite a bit of time on it. Did you? Mm -hmm. There's uh, another one where you go and give magic mush or just mushrooms. Yeah. To mm -hmm. an individual, and then the last one was uh, it was like gold, right? Kind of like a gold town with like yeah. they were covered in honey, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Or like wax. That's the only one I didn't go yeah. to. It, honestly, not much. I, it, there's like a whole. I think there's a kind of bigger story there going on. Yeah. Um, so you you unlock a different type of leveling up system through them and i don't know if you guys noticed this but uh that type of card that you unlock gave you like a secret or a special hat none of those options were good oh yes 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 I totally none know of those saying. options yeah were the good. hats um I, I thought i was reading it wrong because i was like oh i get to unlock a new ability and i'm going through like the five options you have and i'm like do you mean the capes i think it's capes there are new capes, capes or hat yeah whatever it was yeah it changes the cloak not good they yeah None they of them were seemed like, good except for I chose one, which at the beginning of every dungeon you automatically get four cards right yes, when you walk that's in. That's the one I chose too. And then yep. the rest I was like I don't want Same. any of those. Yeah. yeah yeah they were some of them are like classic roguelite mechanics where it's like you are a glass cannon in the sense of okay you do way more damage but you also take, take more, damage. more damage. So like yeah. it's not necessarily bad. It's for like some players who play like that. Yeah. Like, they're just better at dodging and they want to be that glass cannon that just runs through and just destroys yeah. mm -hmm. everything. It's those kind of mechanics, which again, there's choice, there's depth to this game. I, I want to emphasize that because it's it's not simple, actually. I think mm -hmm. the city man management even complicates it more. And, and I'm saying complicates in a good way. I really like the city management. Yeah. Um, you have to gather wood, stone, food, uh, a couple other resources and refine them. And that helps you build more houses that then helps you have more followers. You can also build more, you know, uh, a build, like basically structures that help you when you actually go in to the dungeons. So it's kind of this symbiotic relationship where to build more, you have to explore the dungeons and gather yep. resources and collect followers. But to do that, like to actually build out that you have to do that. So it's like this, yep. this cyclical mm -hmm. thing where you can't just do one of those things and progress through the game. You have to do both. And I feel like they found a really good balance in my opinion. I'll ask the two of Thank you too. where I always was like, Okay, I'm done here. I'm ready to go in. Okay, I'm done doing the dungeon stuff. I'm ready to go back to the the village and build it out more. So I really liked this balance. It also kept my attention really well because if I was getting bored with this side of the game, go do this side, and by the, the, the end of that, I'm ready for this one. So Nick, I want to start with you. What do you think of this, these two halves to this game? Yeah, I thought it was a really good balance because I'm not a big town management person. Um, I, it's okay, you know. I think I like Stardew Valley, which I think the some of the developers were inspired by Stardew Valley, uh, from what I'd read. But uh, there was also so it was a good balance. I felt like I didn't have to spend too much time on one thing, mm -hmm. but there was also a little bit of pressure that um, if you spent too long in the dungeons and you didn't come back in time to manage your camp, then like there would be consequences, right? People would die, or they'd be unhappy, or you hadn't fed them. 
Um, and then same thing with the camp. It's like you couldn't spend too much time there because you needed to go to the dungeon and collect materials or people or like whatever it was. So I feel like they st struck a really good balance. Um, and you could you could play as much as you want on either side, but there would be like some type of penalty for spending too much time in one place. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Adam? I agree. There's a good balance. I wish they were just a little more forgiving, though, on how quickly your camp would turn. Because I did feel I would do one run. And by the time I got back, things are either about to be on the brink of total anarchy or they already were. Yeah. Because <laughs> there was a, I realized that there was a mechanic where if you, if you complete your dungeon run, you have the opportunity to keep going. You yes. Can, I never I, did it. I never did it because. Yeah. Yeah, my camp would be in disarray if I yeah. if I did that. So I wanted to though. I wanted to try, but there's too much at stake. If your camp starts getting out of whack, I mean, that's like we see it. Well, no spoilers, but you need a certain amount of members throughout this game to progress. And yeah. if you did not take care of your camp well, they would die. They would yeah. leave your descent. They yeah. would. So we didn't talk about this. They'll also start. Uh, gossiping, gossiping and spreading rumors yeah and try to like uh basically pull your followers away yeah. and start mm -hmm. their own kind of thing which to talk about how dark it is again this is what i did to fix that problem i put them in prison same uh mm -hmm. so you'd lock their heads up hand like old school prison and i had like a prison camp where there was just like three or four of those same, same. and yeah. then i would put loudspeakers same. next to them so when i went into the church to preach they would get the loudspeakers as well and i don't know if that actually did anything no, that's not yeah right right because you got to go back and you tell the story though in your that, mind like yes. yeah oh. they're gonna hear my sermons uh out there they're gonna think about it while they're locked up in prison yeah and then everyone else can watch that and yep. like that's that's your fate if you dissent you know so I go ahead and the partake trait, if you want i picked the trait that the 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 town felt more loyalty when you put people in prison yeah i did too because i don't want i wanted that to be a good thing and yeah. you know honestly i i always was able to convert them back to my gold yeah mm -hmm. um but yeah they're like in gallows like their hands are in you know gallows, that's the classic thing yeah um and i i same thing like i put the speaker there it doesn't do what we're describing <laughs> but it made sense for yeah, my story it, yep uh it's it's interesting <clears throat> and like and then like after they're back to normal, they're just like cutesy and happy yeah. again. It's just oh, like, yeah. and then you're like, oh, I guess I don't feel bad. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it strikes a weird balance of that's, I have to like clicking that button to choose to do something. And then the result isn't always what you expect. It's cutesier than you expect. So then you're like, okay, I guess I can do that. Okay. Yeah. And then they slowly work, you know, oh, again, now you're just sacrificing your followers, yeah. you know, yeah. they really ease you into it. Yeah. <laughs> um, guys, I wanted to kind of touch on a, a different topic here. Cause I think it's one of the core features of this game that made me love it and it's it's the music uh i wanted to just adam you're big you both are big mm -hmm. music guys but adam start with you here what do you think of the music i liked it a lot i think they did a really really good job i liked how if you just let your lamb sit there for a second it would start bobbing bobbing yeah. like to the music and it was just really really it kind of reminded me of a little bit of lo-fi totally lo-fi yeah. uh, a little lo-fi while you're going through I think they did an excellent <clears throat> job. It's a, it's like way out of their way a good job in my mm -hmm. opinion. Like this is a game that could have done fine with just any music, and this is something I will like preach about with this game. You know, yeah, to use consistent language with this game. Mm -hmm. I, I loved it. What about you? Preach. <laughs> I like very that. nice. Yeah, yeah, they could have just chosen. Uh, I mean, like anything, right? <clears throat> music and sounds are uh, critical to any game development, and you can kind of. You can kind of choose like how far you want to go down that rabbit hole. Haiti's a good example of like just going beyond, uh, you know, and like literally that being one of the main themes of the game. Um, I, I didn't feel like, you know, as passionate about it like I did Hades mm. um, where like I stopped Agreed. and was just like, wow, this completely changes to the to the thing, changes to the experience. But uh, I love lo-fi. I enjoyed it. Uh, there were a few times I didn't play with it, so maybe that was a little bit of it as well. But um, yeah, it was good. I think that uh, if you're someone that knows those things and enjoys it, they they went beyond just putting music in there. You know, yeah. They were very intentional about putting mm -hmm. the beat. And uh, yeah, your idol guy will seem to be, he'll be idling to it. And uh, Again, cutesy. Cutesy. Very yeah. cutesy. Which, by the way, uh, now that Ryan and I are messing around, you every character is idle because if they're not idle in any games, they just look weird. 
Yeah, you have to you have some sort of animation. You never notice that until you, re- really? until you animate them and you realize if they're not animated, they look stupid. Yeah. So uh, it's called which, idle. Whoa. Which I think back no. to actually like Pokemon games, they they definitely don't have an idle animation. Yeah, it's, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, classic, yeah. like the, the top down Pokemon, they just stand there and then they change when you move. So yeah. some games have the pass with it. Some yeah. get away. And again, I think this is one of those examples of game, an indie game that just goes out of its way with detail. Yeah. Uh, and again, small studio published by Devolver Digital, which a lot comes with that in itself. They sure. always publish funny, interesting, like very unique games. Yeah. I always feel like a Devolver Great studio would be unique. Great yeah. studio. Yeah, publisher. Great. Yeah, and yeah, sure. I think I think this is, I don't know. I I want to come to your negatives now, Adam, because okay. I, I personally, and I'll, I'll just kick off my opinions because I didn't say it at the top. Overall, top to bottom, I really enjoyed this game. Other, other than a few bugs, um, I don't think I had many issues with it. I want to kind of hear, because we haven't talked too much about what was that mm-hmm. core negative for you. Core negative for me had to do with bugs, but it wasn't that it wasn't the bug that really frustrated me. It was what the bug ended up causing me to do. So okay. hmm. it was early in the game. I it was in the almost tutorial. I, I don't even know if I was in the tutorial still, but I looking back, I think I was. I was getting my town set up and I performed a ritual. And then after that, a follower came to me and asked if I would perform a ritual. So the followers give you opportunities to do little quests. Well, I had just done a ritual. So when I went to go back, I didn't have enough resources to do the ritual to get the quest completed. And I couldn't go do a dungeon run. It was, it was a barrier. It was barrier. Yeah. And I looked it up. I looked it up. I thought I was doing something wrong. I think it was a bug. And so I ended up spending, this game probably took me way longer than I had to. I probably ended up spending 20, 25 days waiting for my resources to grow the trees in the community so I could have enough wood and stuff to complete that quest. So I wasn't even out of the first, I think I had maybe beaten the first boss and I had already unlocked virtually everything. Because you were waiting so much. Because I was waiting camp. for so long to be able to get enough resources to complete that quest and get through. Oh, wow. So, it, I guess the negative is that there was that kind of bug, but I think I lost some of that sense of progression throughout the game because I unlocked everything so quickly that then there was nothing like to look forward to as I played the rest of the game. So it, it just kind of changed my experience. Of course it did. Yeah. And also just uh, perspectives. You had about 25 days. How many, let's give the audience a, an idea of how significant that is. How many days did it take to actually beat the game for you? Do you have that number? Yeah. If you include all that time yeah. I spent, it was total 84 days. 84 days. Well, wow, actually, wow. so I took me 75 days to beat the game without that bug. Hmm. So for me, that would have been like a third of my game mm-hmm. was stuck in a bug. For you, it was a little bit around the same, yeah, around the same around ballpark. The same. So. I think that will communicate for them also that like you spent almost yeah. a third wasting time with this one bug. And now the alternative was, and we talked about this at the time because Adam called me to see if I had any solutions. And the alternative was to completely restart your game. So it's like at this time, again, we're playing, we play day one pretty much mm-hmm. at this time. The fixes were restart your game or wait till the next patch or push through like Adam and just play. And maybe eventually you can collect the resources slowly over time. And that's what you chose, that's to, what do. I chose to do. Yeah. And for me, I encountered bugs. None of them impacted my overall experience. So they were just like traditional day one bugs. Yeah. And this is some a perspective that I need to keep because we've become somewhat expect expectant or forgiving of bugs at day one games launch with bugs all the time. And I'm just like, Oh yeah, that's fine. You know? Yeah. Uh, I never think that like for Adam, who doesn't play games as frequently that like, oh, no, this just actually can ruin an experience. Yeah. And I had a few that were like uh, I, the I would have an enemy in the dungeon that was just invisible and would just kill me and I couldn't attack it. Uh, yeah. I had some where yeah. some followers would just show up for a task like I'm like they're in confessional and they're they're not there. They're not showing up. So I'm just literally waiting for them to show up to confessional. They won't show no, up. So I have to restart up. the game. Yep. Not restart from the beginning, but just yeah. load back in. There is a high number of bugs for a game, in my opinion. There's Mm -hmm. there's a forgiving amount, and then there's a noticeable amount. I would say that this borders 
the uh, noticeable yeah. concerning amount. Very yeah, would you have to restart it more than a couple times? Because I probably had to you know restart it, turn it off and on, probably like seven or eight times. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and only one of, of only one of them was like frustrating to me. This is how I think maybe you combat this as uh, like a developer when you're designing a game. You have like these auto saves all the time, so it just kind of like if it does happen, you're not too far behind. There was one of them that like I had done just enough before I had auto saved that like when I got back in, I had to run through pretty much like that whole day at the camp, and that was a little frustrating to me. Mm -hmm. I had one in the dungeon that. Uh, I could see the monster. He was just like stuck in a corner, but yeah. I couldn't hit him. Yeah. Um, which was also kind of frustrating because I was towards the end of the dungeon. Um, so like I, those things are a little bit frustrating. Um, it wasn't enough for me to like be upset about it, uh, because because of the auto saves and how I could pretty much jump back in pretty quickly. But yeah, I mean, a few a few times is like fine in my opinion, and I'm totally fine with bugs because. I'm just like, now that I'm understanding more of this, it's like, hey, this is really complex. I get it. But man, there were a lot. Yeah. Um, and for me, it was fine. But I'm sure there are people that that's just going to completely turn off. Mm -hmm. And to be clear, it didn't change my opinion in terms of if what I play this game or not again. Sure. I still would recommend it, but it just kind of took away yeah. some of the that progression. Uh, momentum. Momentum. Yeah. You had a lot of momentum. I remember you yeah. calling me and being like, I love this game so much before that bug. Mm -hmm. And I could just tell the way you talked about it after was a little bit different. Yeah. Because I did make a few key dungeon runs at the end where I was like, this is crucial what I'm doing right now. And I would clear a room and then I couldn't leave the room. Sure. You know, so was, some of those things are really mm. frustrating. So I, I want to say, though, too, for the listener, if you are considering buying this game, that every day this game gets better in the sense of these bugs are being fixed. So like within the first I think few hours of these bugs being reported to developers, they were responding on Twitter and all over the place saying, hey, we're a small team. We're looking at all of these. We're going to address all of these. So as you give these developers time, this might be one of those games that you just wait a couple months after launch to hop into because usually these these big game breaking bugs will be completely worked out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, again, I think we can still still say a strong recommendation from all mm -hmm. three of us. Go ahead. I was going to ask, what did you guys feel about the weapon choice for the runs? I had preferences. Um, you know, you have, you know, describe what Adam's getting to here. There's different weapons like hammers, swords, long, you know, long sword, short swords. And they all have different speed and damage output. So like a hammer is very slow, but has very high uh, damage. And, you know, you randomly come across them, but you have sometimes a choice if you want to take this one or that one. I would always choose the small, quick one. Uh, mm -hmm. Low damage, quick slashing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I liked them. I mean, I, I don't like getting the big ones that were really slow. The claw was my least favorite, which was very slow, mm -hmm. but very powerful. So I leaned quick and dodgy. Uh, what about what about you, Nick? I did the opposite, actually, which yeah. is weird because I'm, I'm usually the quick fast kind of person but mm -hmm. uh i don't know it just felt good like hitting someone and destroying them in one hit yeah uh, so i went that direction as well really yeah. yeah normally not also what i do but man those hammers they they were powerful one hit done when i was forced yeah. to use them it was fun i think i would get frustrated with how slow the like wind up was because it's like you would get hit a lot of times in that wind up mm -hmm. and i'm like you can you can keep your health a lot better with the the smaller weapons because mm -hmm. they're so quick. But mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah, and then also there's on addition to the weapons, there's like a special power you have every run too. It's like a magic ability that's like you know you can throw out like ghosts and they'll go attack or you know like kind of or... yeah flames and they again randomize but you select them and upgrade them over time. Again, cool mechanic. Uh, every it's very roguelite in the sense of you don't have a choice to what you're yeah. going to get. Mm -hmm. I did wish there was a little more uh, variety though. It felt like it was hammer, sword, claw. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that was it. Yeah. Hades did this very well. Yeah. Hades also let you, Choose. the abilities were randomized through each time, like the different effects that the weapons might have. But uh, you also got to choose right there in that front room, which mm -hmm. looking back was kind of cool, actually. I think because if a, you yeah. really did like something, then you could run with that. It's a better mechanic, I think. Yeah. I think that's if for roguelites, there has to be some still choice a little bit just to to help yeah. you kind of build out what you want to do right yeah. there's randomization that's that's the core feature and that's okay but i do prefer prefer the mechanic in hades i think that's yeah. a good point mm -hmm. guys do you want to talk about that quick story spoiler at all at the end there's a kind of a choice yeah i think we I should because I, yeah, I uh i think there's multiple choices so i want to mm -hmm. hear what you guys did yep. okay so for the listener this is your spoiler warning 
I, I mean, even if you hear this spoiler at the end, I don't think it's going to, it's not going to ruin a gameplay, but it is kind of just like the kind of cherry on the top at the end. But this is your spoiler warning. If you don't want any spoilers for Cult of the Lamb, uh, I have time codes in the description of this video or podcast. So spoilers, talk about it. Adam, what did you, uh, do you want to preface s- it? Preface yeah. it. So you, Adam, oh, you want me to? Yeah, go ahead, Adam. Uh, well, you fight for demi demons. Is that how we can classify them? Yeah. You have to defeat those and then you get to what I would assume is Satan. And you're actually, you're, you're working for Satan the whole time. I wouldn't even call it Satan. I mean, because yeah, he was a, I don't know what else to call he him. was a, one of the, yeah. So it's basically there, there were five prophets um and they all had their own cults and followers and one of them started to get too powerful so they locked him up so they were kind of of somewhat oh that's one point yeah yeah yeah. and then as time progressed they were like this one's getting too you know he's lost track yeah so they locked him up and they all are i would call them just like um you know they're 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 false prophets that's how they describe them okay there you go so you you finally get to the point where you can rescue the one that's chained up and you fight two of his little demon followers, Beelzebub and another one. And then you fight him and then you have the option to, once you beat him to save him or kill him. Yeah. At, when he's back in his, uh, cause all these guys, once you defeat them, they go to the, the form of a follower. Yeah. Cute. A cute little cutesy follower. So, uh, at the end there, I chose to kill him. Okay. Chose to kill him. There's also a third option, which is at the beginning. Uh, uh, you can submit to him just right off the bat and not fight. Oh, him. interesting. I forgot that you could. Yeah. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Did you choose that? I did not. I, I was found wondering out about though, this after because I read, I was reading what the other options were after. I was assuming though that it wouldn't let you do that if you selected that. It does let you? You can do it and the game ends. No way. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So what did you choose, by the way? I uh, let him live. I let him live too. Yeah. So interesting. So the three paths here, you at the very beginning of the fight, like without even fighting, you just submit. Yeah. You just say, game yeah, ends, you die. die. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, the preface to that is at the beginning of the game, the other four prophets, they just kill you. Well, the fifth one brings you back to life and essentially says, I need, I'm going to give you life. Uh, here's my hat you need to go kill the other four and bring me back. And then you get to that crux where he's like, okay, you've done that. Give me my power now. Like now, now you're going to be my, oh. you know? Mm-hmm. And so there that was the just a little bit of the, the, so you can just submit to him. Like, yeah, thanks. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, I didn't I, actually even consider submitting yeah. right? instantly. Me, yeah, me either. <laughs> Did you see that twist coming to by the way, that he was going to, cause you're serving him throughout the whole game and you know, by the time you're getting to it, I'm like, oh yeah, he's gonna want to kill. Me. I thought it was pretty obvious. Yeah. It was pretty predictable, right? Yeah. Okay. I, you know, again, so you may not know this, but yeah, if you choose to save him, he comes back to your camp as a little follower, and he just works in your camp now. Okay. Yeah. He doesn't die too. That he has one he perk has. that he's immortal, so he'll always be living in your camp. Yeah. Oh wow. And Maybe I did I not should have kept him around. And I didn't do this. It didn't let me. So I don't know if this was just uh, like when you choose to like nominate someone or pick a certain person, sometimes it gives you a list of five. And I don't know why it gives you those five as opposed to like your other 10 followers. Mm-hmm. But there's an option where you can essentially make like a uh, like leader of your camp. Uh, and it actually diminishes the people's happiness. I'm sure over the long run, it's better because then there's someone like managing them for you. Yeah. I wanted to make him the the manager of the camp it didn't let me but uh yeah unlimited life comes back and then mm. for me though i don't i don't know what the what the uh like what that'll look like long term because yeah. i'm not going back to manage the camp anymore yeah I'm, I'm, do you so that's actually a good thing we have we all have the option to go back and play more and go through more runs and build up the camp are you going to the only thing that i might go do is explore a little bit of those other uh areas that you unlock to play some mini games I didn't check out the last one. So I may go back for 30 minutes and check those out, but this game's probably probably done for me. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. Yeah, not not me. I think uh I think the length was great. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It was a good experience. Uh, yeah. I don't think I'm going to go back and manage the again, I'm biased cuz I'm not a big camp management person, town management person. Sure. So, which to clarify, I'm more in the I'm I feel like it was like I 
if anything, I might go play the knuckle bones yeah. or fishing. But other than that, I'm done. Yeah, I, I don't really want to. I think this is like that bite size indie game. Yeah, that I like. Which, by the way, we're out of spoilers, right? We're not. There's nothing more discussed there. I don't think there was any other. Yeah, no. that was it. Um, yeah, I think this is like a really good. This is priced at twenty five dollars. It you get a good amount of time out of it, and it's just one of those like. It's a good palate cleanser. Like we talk about this with indie games and with the big AAA games where it's like in between these big AAA games, I really like to play small creative indie games because I still, I stand by that. I think the most creative area in gaming right now is always the indie scene. Uh, And this is an example of that. Mm -hmm. Like this is such a unique game. Two genres that you wouldn't think go together, go go together really well. Um, Yeah. Not only do they put two genres together that don't go together, but they also did it in a way of, you know, who, if we're being honest, who doesn't want to know what it's like to run a cult? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> we, or, we didn't know we wanted that. And then this game brought that to us. And yeah. it's like, okay, yeah, let's let's try it yeah. out. Yeah, they, they, had, they had some, you know, I kind of see why these guys did that. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I don't think I don't think there's any other cult management game out there. No, I, I, I honestly think that's fine, too. Like, I, don't, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that the angle they took with this is the only angle you can take with mm-hmm. it. I think yeah. if you were mm-hmm. to take a serious approach. This game would not be fun yeah. and it would be depressing. It'd be weird. Yeah. Yeah. So a little creepy. Yeah. In conclusion, great game. Yeah. Recommend it. Uh, priced already right. If it's on sale, pick it up. And again, if you are worried about bugs, give it a couple months. Yeah. Or go ahead because they're not that major. E- again, but it's unpredictable. But that's, that's to you too. Like you yeah. got you to know yourself mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, guys, before we get into. Did you guys uh, become cannibals or no? I gave the perk to my people where if yeah. there was a body, you can chop it up and feed it to your followers and they like it. <laughs> so, yes, I uh, did because I gave them meat not having that trait selected and it, everyone just pukes and gets sick and then they're sick and then they don't work. And if they don't work, then the town doesn't get built. And you don't get any. Like, it's real horrible. So, like, don't feed them meat. If cannibalism they don't have the cannibalism. Yeah. Yeah. Cannibalism was good. <laughs> good perk. So. <laughs> It's really weird. We here. recommend. We never thought I would say that aloud. We recommend but, cannibalism. So, yeah. um, guys, let's get into some housekeeping. Housekeeping. Upcoming episodes. We have a review of the quarry coming up. I think we're going to record that maybe next week. Yeah, I think Nick so. Afton, my wife good. Emily. A review for multiverses. A review for Roller Drum, which mm. I have to say, right, real quick, great game, really good game. Nick, I think you're playing that. Yep, I would agree. You still at the beginning still? Yeah, I'm uh, a little past the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then a re- your review for Last of Us Part 1, speaking of depressing games, um, Nick and I will be playing that. Yeah. And that came out actually as we record this today. So we're excited to hop into that. Big you know, time. Play one of the, you know, allegedly one of the best games ever made. And we've never played it. So mm-hmm. we are actually going to come at this with fresh eyes and yep. uh, experience it better than everyone else did. Nice. Any other games I haven't mentioned that are on your radar? No, I mean, we we did start playing. Uh, I think we just not talked about Lego Star Wars ever again. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get there. We did start playing Cuphead. I don't know if we'll ever do that Cuphead. one as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I actually did. I went on vacation dun, 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 recently, uh, and I did play through more Lego Star Wars, and I'm through the prequels now, okay. completely through the prequels. Don't know if I'm going to beat it. I, gonna be, <laughs> it's going to be a game that I play over time and beat it in like over the course of a year. Adam, you're going to say you know something. It would be a fun episode. Please. An episode where we review card games in video game format. Gwent, Hearthstone, Knuckle mm. Bones. Which, by the way, I just downloaded Hearthstone last night because you brought it up. So good. Yeah. We should review those. Like, uh, Just put them all together and talk the, about them. The best card games in video games. Yeah. That'd That's be fun. a good idea. You know another fun episode? Start putting a list together. You, If okay. you want to lead that one, lead that charge. Sweet. That I would, like that idea. That would be a nice. good one. I would absolutely hate it. Um, <laughs> it might just be you and I, I on that. Think about the cards in Red Dead. Oh yeah, Red Dead. You mean regular, regular poker? Poker, which <laughs> classic. But yeah, that's if it has a card, a card I just dude. Said. This is a great idea. I love that. I actually also like the idea of, and in addition to that, mini games, end games, because yeah. there's so many of those as well. Yeah, big time. Uh, Eastward had a, uh, I, Eastward had a good one. Um, another thought I was thinking of. This might be really dumb. I'm gonna just go ahead and say it though. The developer, Massive Monster, mm-hmm. for Cold of the Lamb. Yeah. I feel like I just want to write down every single developer's studio name and just talk about them. Hmm. 
like the actual cut. just the actual name how yeah. they came up with they that just name. got like mm. the funniest names right and i've been looking at this recently and we're like that's cool where do any of these come from yeah so wow dude i'm all for it. Maybe. these these random ideas i'm that's the fun stuff to me. You know, reviews are reviews. What do you think? Put it in the comments below. Wow. What do you want to hear us talk about? Email Ryan. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate that. Uh, if there's any game you want us to review, write into the show. We'll play about anything. Uh, Ryan won't, but me and Nick will. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. We also, if you are just a podcast listener, we've been putting out some YouTube Let's Plays, some YouTube clips, YouTube shorts. They're just highly edited. Uh, the Let's Play specifically are highly edited gameplays. So if you are interested at all in that, you like YouTube, we got some content for that. We got a new one coming out. Actually, by the time this comes out, we'll have a whole, you know, three series Sims Let's Play. So check that out. There's also new merch, right? Is yeah, it out yet? it's been out. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the Sunset, the BLG Sunset Tea is out. Nice. It's, you know, kind of a summer vibe coming out towards the tail end of summer here, I'm realizing. But uh, yeah. Yeah. You know. I do nice. think uh, there'll be some more too in the future. Some more, yeah. You got something you haven't told me about this more. These more. You got any ideas? I haven't. Okay, good. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for reviewing this with me today. I really like this, this game. Fun. I like talking about this game. Good game. Yeah, it was fun. And we'll see you later next week. <laughs>